Putin and a policy analyst. We're looking at the Steve Aronsaye report that President Tinubu has um, uh, determined and decided to uh, implement in full. In fact, some headline says the Federal Executive Council okays full implementation uh, 12 years after. Uh, but having been speaking with uh, Prince Kasim Afegwa, he's been saying, yeah, be that as it may, but they still will have to look at it. After all, it's been 12 years uh, in the making that is coming to the public light. It's been kicking around on tables, in drawers, all this while. And so there will be things that need to be sorted out. But I think it's important to know that uh, the president has said full implementation. In other words, he couldn't be more transparent than that. Now, let this committee determine what is practicable now and how we shall be going about that. And uh, Kasim Akagwa has spent a lot of time on that, uh, giving examples of some of the things that might be different today uh, from back then. The other thing that is quite important is that I think uh, it's been said that this is not to be seen as some impending uh, mass retrenchment of workers, people, you know, the unemployment market being uh, swollen. No, 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 no. It's none of that. Apparently, this is another thing that is going to have to be worked out. I think people might be, you know, redeployed or that kind of a thing. So uh, it's like this is going to be, there will be an aim, Kazim, to, 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 to really do this with as little disruptive uh, damage, uh, collateral damage as possible, especially in terms of the labor market. Well, well, part of the reason why government set aside 12 weeks to look at this uh, has to do with uh, some of these issues or these concerns you have raised. We, 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 we need to also look at that aspect so that it doesn't disrupt uh, the system, uh, the, the, the SGF committee that, that is given three, three months to work will also have to consider this aspect. It, it may end up that you will be needing more hands in some areas, and some areas you may not be needing some, hand, uh, yeah. some hands, maybe you will tell them to go. But there will be a, a rationale for any decision that will be taken in this respect. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the Orosanian report will have taken into cognizance these aspects that you have just raised, this concern you have just raised, when they were coming up with their uh, recommendation. But when you want to run a, a lean government, a slim government, it means few people running the business of government so that the money that is available can be judiciously utilized to cater for you know, different aspects of our national life. But in doing that, just like you said, people who have sat, there are people who have sat in positions, one position for eight years, nine years, no promotion, they enjoy it. There are clerks in offices that are, that are casual staff, that are even stronger than permanent staff and all of that. There are so many issues in the civil service that you are, you are going to look into. So what I expect that committee to do is to interrogate some of these nuances and ensure that they are able to come up with what is workable, what is implementable, and what is suitable at this time. Bearing in mind that in 2012, maybe perhaps when the, 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 the committee report was ready, maybe the population of civil service is 1 million. Today, maybe 12 years later, maybe the population is 1.5 million. So you have to look at the viability of the suggestion that Ronsayi made in 2012 with the uh, ex exigency of the moment, you know, and all that. But one thing that you cannot take away is that you have a president who is ready to take a very bold decision that to, you know, facilitate governance, that to deepen governance and make service delivery much more easier for the overwhelming majority of Nigerians. And after doing this, I will expect the president to also take a step further there is a document on restructuring. Chairman by uh, Malam Erufai, you know, when he was governor of Kaduna, the APC, as it were then, set up a committee to look at that particular issue and come out with workable solutions or, work or implementable solutions to some of the issues that are nagging, you know, our federalism. Issue of fiscal federalism and what have you, the relationship between yeah. the federal and the state and the local mm. government, 
and so many other issues. So okay, uh, what, 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 uh, one moment. That document, that document, that document has been gathering dust in the villa yeah, because yeah. it was submitted to President Buhari. Okay, could, could, so, I, could I break uh, in a bit there? I beg your pardon, Kasim. So, sorry, Kazim. Could I be breaking a bit there? Because um, Ada Injos has come on the line and wants to uh, join the program. Good morning, Ada. Hello, good morning, uh, Yuri and Kasim. It's Ada calling from the Statue State. Yes, some of the agencies or ministries were created or are even being created now for political reasons. I commend President Tinubu for taking another bold decision to implement the Orison Year report after 12 years. I've always been an advocate of the implementation of that report right from day one. Unfortunately, it has taken 12 years for it to see the light of the day. Uh, the interesting part of it is that they said uh, there are the promises of no job losses. Having said that, the corruption is a, uh, corruption is a bane to our development. So we have, we have to keep on fighting corruption. Another problem is to address uh, our faulty structure. We have to practice fiscal federalism, otherwise known as restructuring, if we are to experience any form of uh, economic growth. Above all, government should, be, uh, government should create an enabling environment for jobs to be created by the private sector. The public uh, sector cannot create jobs for uh, the overwhelming and uh, seeming uh, unemployed youth. Again, the president uh, still should look at the, the, the bloated uh, cabinet. I still insist. Let him, he has, he has awarded them enough. The Minister of State, we don't need them. It's even unconstitutional. One of them told us that it's unconstitutional. One of the substantive ministers now after serving as a minister of state. He said it's unconstitutional, so let me look at it again, and then do away with them after one year. I think that there are permanent secretaries there to work with the ministers of state. You know, all the same, let's hold you up at Nigeria. All right, then. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ada. There was an aspect in what Ada was saying there about uh, perhaps charity starting at home. Might the president want to look at um, also, you know, pruning down uh, his uh, entire cabinet himself along the lines that Ada suggested? Well, uh, I'm not in the mind of the president, but he may be thinking in that direction. Uh, don't forget that the issue of ministers and the appointment is, uh, you know, uh, uh, captured in the Constitution of Nigeria, 1989, as amended. And yeah. so if uh, there is no provision for minister of state, you may just uh, do away with that with time. But at least he, need, he needed all of these guys to help him stabilize, uh, maybe after one year he will look at uh, this uh, kind of uh, suggestion or recommendation, and if he finds it worthy to be so considered, he will not hesitate, because given his nature, he wants results, he wants to leave you know, uh, remarkable landmarks in the, in the sense of time. And uh, if, if there's anyone who has courage and boldness, I think President Tenubo is. Uh, George Inikeja, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Uncle Yare. Thank you for Good morning calling. to Mr. Fegwa. Yeah. Uncle Yare, let me thank first uh, thank Mr. Fegwa for the maturity he displayed during the APC primary. I believe he has what thank it you very much. governor. Age is still on his side, and I know he will be governor of that state one day. Uh, Mr. Fegwa, please you. don't mind those uh, politicians in labor clothing. What they are trying to do is to bring down the government because they could not win elections. But that is not the way. All they did before the elections, during the elections, and after the elections, didn't work. This one, too, we, we also fail. I, I, Uncle Yuri, I saw the list of um, the agencies, uh, you know, the, the mergers and acquisitions uh, you hear and there. Many are in order, but I'm concerned with one. The one that concerns uh, Nigerians in the Diaspora Commission. Okay, it's that's that, now being subsumed yeah. under the uh, Ministry under of the Ministry uh, Foreign of, uh, Affairs. External Affairs. Foreign yeah, external affairs. affairs. That commission is, has been doing the work of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, actually. The, the Nigerians abroad, the way the head of that commission has been relating with them, there are several times the you know, Nigerians have, have stranded uh, outside the country. That woman is the one we see. We don't even know whether we have a... a Honorable Abike mm, yes. So, in my view, if that uh, commission should be matched with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, then that woman, Abike Dabiri, should be the minister. Good morning. <laughs> 
Okay. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. George. Um, I think. <laughs> okay, Kazi. Well, well, the man just stepped well, in. He, he well, just stepped into the president's well, thank, uh, chair thank there. Thank you. I made it. Yeah, I made thank, you, Mr. thank you, Mr. George. Uh, thank you, Mr. George. You see, the point is institutions are built not because of individuals, but because whether the individual is there or not, there is someone who will manage any of those institutions. So uh, the institution was not created because of uh, Abike Dabiri, even though she has done a marvelous job. If, for example, tomorrow they decide not to appoint her, what would you say? So I think we need to commend her for standing tall to, uh, to start a commission from the scratch and has not taken it into a national recognition. Because if you discuss with diaspora and those in the diaspora, what they relate to it is essentially that need come. And so now that it's going under the Foreign Affairs Ministry, it will also save us some kind of rule conflict. Because before now there has been issues of rule conflict, but the last minister for, uh, for Foreign Affairs was not, uh, was not uh, up and doing. I think maybe the portfolio was bigger than him or... He doesn't understand what he should do in that foreign ministry. A very cerebral man who is well read, but he doesn't understand the nuances of foreign policies and all of this. So rather than come up to take charge of the responsibility vested in, in him, he, he allowed uh, uh, a more active, vibrant uh, Abike Dabiri to take the shine of that uh, sector. And so... Uh, I think NITCOM will go to be under the foreign affairs so that there will be unanimity of purpose and intention in, you know, charting the roadmap for our foreign policy, whether it's Af Afrocentric or otherwise. Okay, then. Let me bring in Chidi now in Kafantian. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you for calling. Good morning, Mr. Kasim Afebwal. Thank you very much. Good yes, morning. Um, the President Tinubu's administration's decision to implement Chief Oronsayen's report 12 years after is indeed commendable. But I would advocate the fact that it should be done with a human face in such a way that it is not going to be another clock in the wheel of our progress. And at the same time, it is going to reduce the bureaucracy sometimes in some of our ministries, departments, and agencies of government. If this is properly implemented, I want to strongly believe that it is, create, is going to create a healthy environment for the government and the people of Nigeria. And at the same time, make governance very, very cheap. Because there is indeed a high cost in the governance of this country. Thank you very much. And God bless Nigeria. Thank Indeed, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Chief, thank you. Uh, for thank you. In. Thank okay, you. That's a nice one. Well, the, the the one thing that is clear here, and I think it has been clear to a lot of people from the very beginning, is that Tinubu is going to take whatever it uh, takes uh, to, you know, see the success of his ideas. I'm reminded here we are talking about this. Uh, Chidi's, um, you know, admonition is 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 well taken. Um, the other day, the news broke that the president had drafted in the private sector, captains of industry, into a sort of economic advisory team. Everybody that is concerned here. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I think he always said this, that, look, it's not about, we don't have all the answers, and we are a listening people. We want to hear, come, let's jot, jot together. Uh, let's find out what the problems are, and let's jointly look for solutions to these problems. Um, I, I believe most people will find that commendable because he's like going off the think, beaten yes, track. Yes. Yes, you know, the, the, the president is very conversant with what is happening in the country. And don't forget also that the relationship between the public and private sector is that of a symbiotic one. It's a mutual relationship. Government creates the enabling environment for businesses to thrive. Government has no business in business. And government own is to provide security, to provide infrastructure that will help the private sector and entrepreneurs 
to also translate their initiatives to practice for the good of the society. And so yes. in engaging with them, in engaging with them, is trying to create a synergy between government and the private sector and robustly engage the issue so that where in the final analysis, whatever decisions are, are going to be taken will not have telling impact on the private sector as well as what the ones that government are, are concerned with. I think uh, e economic solutions all over the world, and I keep saying this, it's all a function of trial and error. If you, if you lock up 10 economies in a room to come up with solutions to an economic problem, they are going to give you 10 different ideas. Some of them will think that, oh, you need to invest so much in infrastructure. Yes, uh, that the, that way you can take away people from the street and get them to work. Mm -hmm. Others will say, oh, no, you need to create jobs and all of that. But how do you create jobs? So there are different approaches to finding economic solutions to problems. And when you try one and it's not fitting to the type of economic problem you have, you try another. And so that is why mm -hmm. you see the government has to think about this. First and foremost, floating the Naira. From floating the Naira now, they are talking about recapitalizing the bureau, the change, and all of that. Two billion first year, 500 million, then 250 million, and all of that. So these are all initiatives that are products of those who are thinking for government, those who are, who are thinking that if we do this, this can work. If you implement and you are not getting the desired result, you think I will teach again. That's how society... Uh, okay, let me bring so in Mazi or Korafo. As, as far as I'm uh, concerned. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I beg your pardon, Kazim. Mazi Okoroavo in Arochubu has been waiting for a while. Uh, good morning to you, Mazi. Yeah, good morning, sir. You see, the issue we are facing today is that uh, during the presidential regime, what happened? Some fab came to spend a lot of billions, millions upon billions. Now, what we are supposed to do now is this. Thank God for the president for that Orisaya report. So you, you know, it's very, very disheartening. In a country like ours, you see a signboard, federal agency, institute, they start waiting, waiting. You go there, you only see lizards and grasses inside the compound. At the end of the day, some people will be collecting salary, doing nothing. You start asking yourself, does it mean the authority concerned doing know about that, all these moribund uh, uh, agencies? So the earlier we remain that original report, the better for us. You sure there are... Agencies in Nigeria, up to church, much of them is in fact 10 or 10, much all of them together. What do the people talk about the staff? Yes, the staff that are qualified in each department, you send them to that department to work there. Then those of them that are not qualified, you send them to There are many of them in the instant that are supposed to be in agriculture, but they are not there. And that is why every individual started complaining that no food, no license. But there are people that have been employed in all these agencies, but the agencies are not doing nothing. So the matter of all these agencies is the area the federal government implemented the better for us to not only the safe course, so that we come at it. Look at Ajakuta steel industry, Sayuri. Did you know that Ajakuta industry is going to produce anything we use to build other industries in this country, to build any factory in this country, even our houses, no matter how type of uh, the sector you want to build. But what is happening there? All this, but we we'll go there start asking yourself, what is happening? We have all it takes. To move this country forward. You know that, you know that. All right, then. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mazi Okoroafo. Uh, we're fast running out of time, but, you know, finally, you've spoken about labor, uh, uh, you know, and, you know, the attitude you, you would like to see uh, from uh, labor, not to unnecessarily uh, complicate the whole environment. You also find that um, there are some, you know, uh, national leaders, some senior citizens, uh, at least are uh, going by what I see on social media, who have been advising people, uh, known centers of wanting to cause, you know, problems. Uh, that is the way the ruling party I, might I, see it. But I, they, 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 ad, 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 admonishing them not, not to come out and protest any nonsense. I, 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 I really want to commend Nigerians who have gradually getting to understand that government business must move forward and that issue of strike and down tool actions are antithetical to the growth and development of this country. Whether you like it or not, when you continue to strike, so much money is being denied to accrue to 
the federal pulse, the state pulse, and the local government pulse. The point must be made that the Mr. President has got some very solid guys around him. The National Security Advisor is doing so much. Uh, the Minister for Information is doing so much. At least this, this government is communicating with professionals who understand the issues. They are engaging robustly what, you know, with the issues and talking to different unions and explaining to them what government intends to do. But when you say you are going into strike, and the reason for going to strike during the military is because they are not ready to listen to you. But this president is, is a listening president. He's, he, he's engaging. He's interactive. He, he, he likes the resource of dialogue. And so why would you want to go, to, go on strike just to cause further frictions? You know, in the, in, yeah. in, in the politics. So I, guess, I want I to guess, commend people like the, it, the, the, the information that. minister, We're done with the NSA, and all of that. We're done with electioneering. I want, no, I want to really, com I want to really commend them for for being able to talk to some of these union affiliate unions and such that at least labor will NLC will gradually see that they are losing their steam for the wrong reasons because they are not factoring in the interests of Nigerians and the interests of the okay. country at heart. We're, we're in taking have to decisions, leave. they must look, look at the bigger issue. They must be patriotic and ensure right, that they are part of part of the development of the country and not trying to pull down the government because. They don't like the face of the man behind the dress. Thank you very much, uh, Prince Kazim Afegwa, uh, APC Chieftain, Policy Analyst. Thank you very much for making your time, uh, get, you know, make your time available for us this morning. Thank you very much. We are, we're going to have to leave it there. That's our program. Do please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. Uh, I am Yori Folare. Bye-bye for now.